everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio, and this is my speed up version of the live stream show over on Art Joy of Sharing that we did today. Peg and I worked together on that live stream show, so there's two of us on the screen. You can go over and watch it. It's in real time. Of course, it's recorded now, but it was a live stream. We do that every Thursday morning at 1030 Central Time, um, which right now for me is 830, and we are all in the month of November, we're going to be doing uh, winter holiday themed projects. So today we did card making and I decided to do card making combining gel printing and stamping. <clears throat> so I have my five by seven gel plate out and I'm using some different stencils and stamps that I have in my collection. Uh, the stencils are all from Stencil Girl Products and you can find them at www.stencilgirlproducts.com. And I, I am using six by six stencils and diff, just different random patterns. They're not necessarily holiday. I wanted to build up some layers of color. So I started out with a, a red orange mix, did um, some stenciling and pulled some of that paint off. Then I went in with some yellow and light pink did another stencil, pulled some of that paint off, and then I put on some green as my final layer there. And I am using some round stamps, um, just round, they're just round. And making different marks on the gel plate, um, kind of removing paint from the plate, and then I'm stamping it off onto that extra piece. I actually end up um, with two pieces, two card card layers um, when I'm done with each one. And they look different. To pick up this one, I used some silver metallic paint and picked up the whole bunch of layers that were on there all, on, all at once. <clears throat> and by putting those circles on there, I end up with something that looks like uh, tree ornaments baubles see that's from removing the paint with the rubber stamp and then the silver shines through so then this other piece I thought it was too loud so I just put a whole layer of silver on it this silver metallic paint is translucent and so it just kind of dulls down everything I didn't actually use that one in today's projects but I'll, I will use it so for my next one, I decided to go with um, blues. And so I started with kind of a, a royal blue color and I used a stencil. I love this stencil, it's called Spoked Wheel. And I just, I think it's the coolest stencil I have. It's more like a mask um, than a stencil. So once that one was, um, once I pulled some paint off of that one, then I went back in with some more um, paint over a stencil, I think. Yeah, light blue paint. Um, going through a stencil to make some more marks. Again, just layering up color, one on top of the other, to make an interesting background. And then I ended up pulling that one onto my first one. Uh, just to get some of the, the paint off, I made a pretty thick layer of that light blue paint. So then, I, for my third color, I used a purple through a dotty circle type um, stencil to get a little bit of purple going on there. And my final pickup was with white, white acrylic paint to pick all those layers up at once. And I had so much white paint on my paper that I just put a little bit over that other piece to kind of calm down all those big um, circles that are on that spoked wheel. Then I got out a stamp that is a snowflake and I'm stamping through that all those layers on my gel plate with that snowflake. And I decided to try picking it up with a dark paper to see what that looks like. And that is what I get. You can see the, see the snowflakes, they aren't super obvious, but I thought it was kind of cool. So then I did a cleanup print um, 
with some black picking up all the rest of the stuff that was on there and using my stamp because I wanted to see what that would look like and this time I'm jiggling my stamp a little bit and it get it, it uh, makes a bigger space if you jiggle the stamp back and forth a little bit kind of pressing and just you know how gel plates are like jello you just kind of jiggle just slightly and I'm using up the extra paint on another piece and just stamping it with the black snowflakes. And that is what I end up with that one, that one, which I did use. That's pretty cool. And then I just cleaned everything off the plate by using a layer of the silver metallic because there was, you know, stuff on there. And I didn't want the black crusty bits to get onto my next piece. So that will be interesting collage fodder because it's got some of them snowflake lines. Now this is a carved stamp that I carved myself. It's kind of like a, a tree um, with sort of a Celtic design, sort of. And I'm starting with some medium green and some uh, teal, turquoise type color on the plate putting down a stencil and pulling some of the paint up onto some paper. And then I think I get another stencil out to make some more pattern. Oh yeah, a bigger, bigger openings. And then I was using a stamp that looks like a branch to pull paint through the stencil. I was trying to get some of that kind of leafy branch looking stuff. I'm not sure that it showed up that much, actually. When I went to pull it, pull some of the paint through the stencil, it uh, was already pretty dry. So I ended up picking up this whole thing with some dark blue. And I put the rubber stamp, kind of jiggled it a little bit onto this one, pulling some of that blue off. And then I just used that same piece because I didn't really get much on it. I used that one to pull up the whole thing. And that was the Christmas tree one. And then this is clean up. Um, this one turned out pretty interesting too. I didn't up, end up using it today, but I will at some point. It's always nice just to have these painty backgrounds whenever you're making cards. So it's got some of that design, the pattern um, from the, the rubber stamp. So here's the pieces that I gel printed, and now I'm ready to make them some of them into cards. The show is an hour and a half, so I didn't get all of them done. I, did, I think I did five. So I got back out that leafy branch and I'm putting some, some branches, some uh, boughs, I guess they are, onto this with some archival ink over the gel, the gel print. Now these are simple cards. I didn't go crazy at all. They're very simple. But if you're someone who has a lot of people to make cards for, these might be options for you. That'd be easily duplicatable. <laughs> Duplicated, I guess would be the proper word. I used a um, brush pen to kind of add a little bit of a shadow around my baubles and then um, a gold metallic pen to put some of those tops, those little top things on, and a glitter pen to kind of dot a little bit of color onto the designs that I had stamped across. And then I need to find something to mount this on. This is a kind of a, I don't know, orangey red sort of a cardstock folded in half. Remember, uh, for a standard card, which is an invitation envelope that's easy to find in the United States, um, it is it is four and a quarter by five and a half. So if you cut an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper in half and fold it over, that's your card base. And then you cut the other into quarters to make your, your um, gel printed layer 
Um, and then you can just trim it down so that you get a little bit of a border around it, which is what I enjoy layers. So then this one needed something. So I got back out the same stamps and some ink and I stamped the circle. I stamped the open circle around the edge, which is like a black line. My black pad really needs to be re-inked though. It didn't come out very dark. And then the small line of circles, I used gold ink. And then um, a gold top, some of those branches, the branches stamp, boughs, branches, whatever you want to call it. it just looks like a little pine, pine situation. And then I just trimmed that one out. And this cutter, I do not recommend it. It does not cut straight. You really have to hold the paper down or else the paper slides and you get a crooked situation. Then I got out some of that red and I made another layer to make a little border around the, the, um, the little layered piece. I'm really having trouble. It's not straight. When you look at it in the picture, you'll see that it's not straight. But, you know, it was a live stream. <laughs> you don't have time to mess with it. And then I got out some cord. This is hemp cord that's been dyed red. Tied it in a little bow and I used some tacky glue to glue down the bow. And now it looks like a little ornament on a Christmas tree. So that's card number one with gel printing and stamping combination. Mixed media, I suppose you would call it. So then this one is the one that uh, I picked up with black paint that I put the, the snowflakes through to pick up the colors and it's got blues and purples uh, snowflakes on it. And I got out that same snowflake stamp and stamped it on a piece of white with some blue and some purple kind of offsetting because that's the colors that were coming through from the black. So I just stamped one down and then stamped the other one on top of it just slightly offset. And then I cut that out, again, struggling with this cutter. It's junk, I just need to get rid of it. I wanted a small guillotine cutter that I could show on screen, you know, because the other one is so big, I can't like plop it down in there and show that I'm cutting. So I decided I would get a smaller one and use it as I was working, but that one is not, not. <laughs> I hate it. It's horrible. It won't cut straight. <clears throat> it did have a guide piece on it, a plastic piece that I might try putting it back on because I took it off because it was hard to slide the paper underneath it. But maybe if I put it back on, it'll hold the paper tighter and give me the option of having a little bit straighter cuts. I'll have to try that before I just simply trash it into the trash because it's really annoying. So then I wanted to make like a silver frame with my Posca pen, but this Posca pen was acting weird and it was sliding underneath, the color was sliding underneath the metal ruler and making a smeared line. So I just decided to go with that and just make kind of a crazy border um, by hand and just make kind of like a scribbly interesting border with the silver pen because it's not that bright anyway so I thought it would be more abstract that way. So I have the happy holidays on there and I did a little bit of splatter and there's that card. Oh I also added some glitter after the fact. Um, on all of them I added added glitter, a little bit of glitter glue. So then the next one is that kind of uh, the print with the Celtic tree on it. Now when you're using stamps on your gel plate, you're not getting a super clear. The way I did it with the jiggling and stuff, it's not super clear, but it's it's interesting looking instead of just the same old thing, you know, same old boring thing. So I folded a piece of dark green and then I used another green as a layer on this one and then put that piece on the top, the gel printed piece on the top 
I layered that card up that way. I used to love putting uh, ribbons and sequins and things on my cards, and you've seen me do that before, but I've discovered that when you take those to the post office, they, they charge you an extra fee if it's not completely flat. So this time I'm pretty much, with the exception of that bow that I put on the one card, I'm kind of embellishing with pens and coloring and stuff like that rather than putting, you know, this one would be great with some sequins or little stick-on jewels glued to it. It would cost extra to mail it. So there's that one. It's a little bit simple. I might put something like a little, some little words or something on it later. And then I have these two that are kind of some blue, blues and purples. So I decided to make um, like more winter snowman type cards with blue and purple. So I have a blue base that I'm gluing this one on. That's the one with the uh, spoked wheel mask from Stencil Girl that I like so much. And I have a piece of purple out. I've got um, I've got a background that's already been stamped for the other one. And I'm stamping with stays on ink these a couple of these little snowman stamps. I love snowmen. I I have all kinds of snowmen on my tree. When I decorate my tree, I have all kinds of snowmen, different types, because that's my favorite. Snowflakes and snowmen are my favorite holiday decorations for winter holidays. I just love them. So then uh, I found this piece that had a little bit of stamping on it already. Uh, put some ink around the edge and I am going to layer that <coughs> with the other piece that I had that had the blues and purples on it. Which I, I went to my big cutter and uh, got it cut down. I'm going to put that one at a little bit of an angle. And then put my little snowman on, which is backed by some purple cardstock. Then I got out some pins and I did some coloring on these. I would normally use a water-based pen. These happen to be the India ink ones that were, you know, next to me on the floor because I'd used them over the top of that other print for some shading. So this is what I had and that's what I used. You could also do it with watercolor. I, lo I love to watercolor this image. I think it's really fun. I've had this stamp forever. And I always like to use it. I just think it's so cute. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this little video to start out our winter holiday fun for, from Art Joy of Sharing live stream. And of course, you'll see the speed up version on my channel here. Um, something every Thursday having to do with the winter holidays, cards, packaging, decorating, stuff, gifts, stuff like that. If you have enjoyed this video, gel printing with rubber stamps, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Uh, you can leave me a comment or question. Uh, if you guys would like to um, learn more about stamps with your mixed media, we do have a class that's starting this Saturday the 6th. And I will put a link below if you want to go sign up for that class. It's uh, all month long of November. Uh, classes about mark making and stamping. So that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>